Hello everybody, welcome back. <clears throat> My voice seems a little weak. It is, I'm getting over some kind of sickness that I've had since uh, since about Thursday afternoon. It's Sunday afternoon right now, finally feeling a little better, feel like doing a little something. So we got some nice weather for a change in West Tennessee. We're in the mid to upper 80s instead of mid to upper 90s or lower 100s. So I've got five homesteading ideas for you. Maybe you're new to homesteading are you new to country living and you're looking for ways that you can be self-sufficient on your homestead. So I've got five ways for you. These are all five things that we have personally uh, tried and done uh, to some degrees of success. I don't want to talk about things that I've personally not tried because I can only, you know, I can't speak personally those things. All right, turn my head around so you can see me, but let's get into this and let's start with, uh, uh, we're here by our latest little, uh, our latest bill, our budget chicken tractor. If you haven't seen that video, uh, we'll, I'll put a link in the description to see uh, the video. But that is where we're going to start off. Chickens are the gateway animal for a lot of people who could move out to the country and buy some property. Even people with large backyards. It's kind of the the animal that we all started with. It's the animal that we started off with. And there's a lot of reasons for that. And there's a lot of reasons that chickens are good for the homestead. So the other thing about raising chickens is it's easy to scale up. It's easy to start with a few chickens, get your feet wet, and then scale up from there. You can purchase an inexpensive incubator. Um, if you haven't seen our video about our incubator setup, watch that. That's a very inexpensive incubator. It can still be purchased for around between 50 and 75 dollars a day uh, and so it's easy to scale up the next thing that's great about raising chickens is there's so many things that you can do um, with with your chickens you can have eggs and meat at the height of our chicken operation we had about 30 laying hens and we were selling quite a few eggs back then and about twice a year we, we would take some of our eggs incubate them raise those chicks up so they got to a certain age and then we would butcher them to provide meat. Now, uh, the chicks that, the breed that we were using at the time were red sex links. And don't misunderstand me, you're not gonna get the rate of growth and things that you that, that you get off of, off of traditional meat breed birds. But you can take, take those birds, grow them out about 12 weeks instead of eight weeks, and, and you can provide meat at virtually the only, the only cost you have is is a little bit of chicken feed. So those same 30 chickens that pro provide you eggs can also provide you meat for your freezer. You can have eggs to sell. Don't get caught in a rut just because you think you have egg laying chickens that they can't be used. You can't raise some of those to eat. We know some of these, some of these, uh, some of these chicks that we have in here that we hatch from eggs, we know some of those are gonna be roosters. And uh, our plan is we're just gonna take some, uh, some of those roosters and we'll uh, process them and put them in our freezer uh, to provide meat. Another great thing about raising chickens is that they're easy to sell. And there are so many income streams that you can, you can go after. You can sell uh, farm fresh eggs. You can sell fertilized eggs to people like us that were looking for some eggs to put in our incubator. You can raise, you can incubate those eggs yourself, hatch those chicks, sell chicks. Uh, you can raise meat birds and sell the meat to the public. There's so many. The possibilities are endless of what you could do with chickens. And I mentioned chickens and I mean poultry and whole because uh, this kind of encompasses the whole world of, of, of poultry, of, of poultry and waterfowl. Another great thing about chickens is that it doesn't take a whole lot of room. You could raise chickens in a small backyard. It's being done all over the country. It's, it's really popular right now. And we see people raising chickens in a small backyard. You can fit chickens in just about any size yard. Of course, there are some things that are not so good about raising chickens. Number one, they're slobs. Chickens are some of the most unsanitary animals you can raise. Chickens do not care if they poop in their food or they poop in their water or they poop in their bed. They just don't care. They're just going to do their thing and you pretty much have to kind of keep them clean. So it's going to be a little bit of work to keep everything clean. You'll make sure you, waters, you want to try to use waters that are automatic, like this water behind me. 
feeders that way that they can't contaminate uh, the whole supply of food and water. They can only contaminate a small amount. Second thing, second con about raising chickens is that they are extremely susceptible to predators. Just about every predator that you can shake a stick at loves a chicken dinner. I mean, from, even from, from animals that we might not think of, even uh, a, a neighbor's dog. A lot of animals like a chicken dinner. So you're gonna have to really work hard at keeping your chickens safe from predators. We have lost countless, countless, countless chickens over the years. Um, once a predator finds your chickens, they will not stop until they get every last one. Um, you're gonna have to make it that it, it would be easier for them to find a meal someplace else down the road. That is the best tip I can give you about keeping your chicken safe is, is to make it so difficult for them to get in it that they'll find somewhere else to go. If your chickens are easily accessible, if they're easy to get to, they, are, they will wipe them out. I've seen it happen way too many times. Um, there's lots of, I, I suggest that if you're looking into this that you do a lot of research on, on protecting them from predators because that's going to be your number one struggle is keeping these guys safe from predators because we all love a chicken dinner. So, while I'm here by, by the chicken track, let's go ahead and talk about another homesteading idea, and that is raising rabbits. Now, why in the world would I be standing next to the chicken tractor when I'm talking about rabbits? Number one, we don't have rabbits yet. I'd like to get rabbits again. We have raised rabbits in the past, and I would like to try it again. Now, um, I want to, my plan is to build another one of these and use it for to ra and use it to raise rabbits. So let's talk a little bit about rabbits. There's some great things about rabbits. Number one, they don't cr they don't need a lot of space. Uh, they can be raised in uh, hutches and cages, even in tractors like this. Uh, you want to make sure if you if you were, if this was for rabbits, I would have some wire underneath there so that they wouldn't dig under. Another good thing about rabbits is that they're also, they're inexpensive. You can purchase a breeding set of rabbits for, for a fairly inexpensive price. We raised, uh, we raised California rabbits, meat rabbits, and, uh, and we, they had a very good feed conversion rate. Uh, and so what that means is the amount of food that you feed them versus the amount of meat that they give back. So we did raise rabbits to eat ourselves, put in our freezer, and I'm gonna tell you, I know some of you may be like, rabbit, are you serious? I'm gonna tell you guys, trust me, domesticated rabbit is delicious. It's one of my most favorite things to eat. We, we our favorite meal to prepare with uh, with rabbit was, was uh, barbecue. Barbecue rabbit is delicious. Now, I grew up eating wild rabbit. My grandfather was a big rabbit hunter and loved wild rabbit. But tame rabbit is just, it's just, I, I don't know, it's just better. I, it, it's just, you've got to give it a try. It is worth a try. Now, when they hear somebody say they're gonna eat a rabbit, oh, you know, that's that's Thumper, that's, you know, that's a pet, we don't eat rabbits. But rabbits, uh, domesticated meat rabbits are a very large business overseas. It is a growing business in the United States. One of the largest processors, uh, I believe, is, is in Arkansas. Um, but the rabbit is delicious. I encourage you guys, don't knock it till you try it. But I'd like to go back to doing rabbit soon, and, and, and probably going to be doing it in, in a chicken tr in something like this chicken tractor. But uh, another good thing about rabbits is that they're very easy to butcher. Um, you can you can butcher six, eight, ten rabbits in an hour or less. It's very easy to butcher, very easy to do. That's the great thing about rabbits; they don't take a lot of room. And they're easy to process, and they taste delicious. A couple of other things, good things about rabbits. First is, well, they 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 breed like, well, they breed like rabbits. They 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 reproduce very well. You can have quite a large litter from one one female rabbit litter, so you can you can produce a lot of rabbits very fast, and so that's a great thing. But can also be a bad thing. We'll get into that later. The next thing about rabbit that's really good, a lot of people don't know, is a rabbit is the rabbit manure is excellent fertilizer. It is it's very good 
for your garden. Another great thing about rabbits is a lot of people don't know this, but uh, rabbits will, can eat grass. Uh, rabbits will eat grass, they'll eat hay. And so that, will, that would fit in perfectly with our model that we've got going here with our goats and we've got hay over here stored away. So you may see rabbits in a future episode. But rabbits are a great animal. Let's talk about some of the cons of rabbits. Uh, number one, um, if you're looking to make money off of rabbits, it's not going to be an easy sale. Um, if you're looking to sell your rabbits to other people, to, to, if you're looking to sell to a processor, you're probably going to have to travel a long distance and you're probably going to have to get your name put on a waiting list and get approved. And, and so it may not be an easy sale. You may have a better time selling to lo other local breeders. Um, uh, but uh, it, it'll be a little bit more of a difficult sale uh, than, than say chickens or maybe even goats or even pigs. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a little more work in it. Another thing that you, that you to think about, if you were to raise rabbits in a hutch or in a cage, then you're going to have to really control the, the manure. You're going to have to really keep that clean because I want to tell you something. There is no stink like rabbit stink the urine and the manure that piles up underneath those cages and underneath those hutches will gag a maggot. It is, you'll have to keep it clean. That's why uh, if we do rabbits again, they'll be in a tractor like this where we can spread their manure over a large area and not have to worry about the smell. I also want to mention rabbits are, like chickens, very susceptible to predators. Just like everything loves a chicken dinner, a lot of things love a rabbit dinner too. And so you've got to be really careful about keeping your rabbits safe. About another con about rabbits is that they are very uh, heat and cold sensitive. Um, you know, here in the South where we live, our problem is more of heat. Rabbits can become overheated. When we had rabbits here on, on the farm, we would, uh, on the hot days, we would freeze two liter bottles, put the two liter bottles in their cages and they would pretty much sleep on top of those ice water bottles to keep them to keep them from getting over overheated. Uh, if you live in extreme cold, uh, we we don't have extreme cold. I've heard that rabbits do better with cold than they do with heat, but they are prone to uh, to especially to heat and even even very very cold temperatures as well. Another thing to mention, another con about raising rabbits is actually it's it's the same as one of the pros, it's the breeding. We compare other animals to rabbits and say, well, they breed like rabbits. Rabbits are prolific breeders, but it can also be difficult to manage. Um, if you raise your rabbits in cages, you would have to keep the females and the males separate and you have to move the males in. And it can be very difficult to manage and you have to really keep up with when your, uh, when your does um, become pregnant and you got to keep good records. It can get out of hand. Sometimes you'll have trouble with uh, uh, does that are not good mothers. We had uh, we had one that was not a good mother. We ended up having to call her because she would literally she would literally kill uh, her her baby. So uh, it can be difficult to manage the breeding aspect of it. But overall, rabbits are a good fit. For a small homestead you can provide a lot of meat with not a lot of space and that's a great thing all right so the next uh homesteading idea i want to talk to you about is gardening and i almost almost didn't want to bring you over here because you can see our garden is a mess right now uh we did recently um and my wife and i went back we worked for the school system we recently went back to work school has started back and i have been a little under the weather this weekend and have not been able to get into the garden but hey guys i'm sorry it's real life. <laughs> I'm not hiding it from you. I'm showing you the hot mess that it is. So, also there is a squirrel above me. I don't know if you probably can't hear it. There's a squirrel above me munching on pine cones. So if you hear a little noise, that's what that is. But uh, I want to talk about gardening. Gardening could be a, a great thing for your homestead. It could be a great fit. Um, uh, a lot of great things about gardening. It can be small scale. You can do it in a very small piece of land. You can do it in a very big piece of land. It can be scaled up, it can be scaled down. You can produce a lot of food in just a little bit of space. Um, 
whether you have a traditional garden like we do or whether you do something on a smaller scale. There's a book out that's been out for many, many years. Uh, it came from a, a show that used to be on public television years and years ago. The book is called Square Foot Gardening and there's even a, a companion book that goes along with that is Square Foot Market Gardening and it talks about doing it on a commercial scale. You can garden in very small, in, in very small places. You don't have to have a huge garden. You can have a small garden. Uh, you know, Michelle and I, we grew up with this kind of garden and you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Uh, but I'll tell you what, if for somebody that's starting out, I really would recommend looking into raised beds, doing small scale square foot gardening. And it's really, that way you can start with very little equipment, just a few little hand tools and be able to have a, a lot of food. Um, there's a lot of techniques that you can use in gardening. Uh, one technique that we use, it, we use sometimes in the fall, is called secession gardening, where we will have, we'll be growing lettuce and we'll have it varying, we'll have different lettuce plots and each one is a little bit further, a little bit further along than the other. That way we can harvest that lettuce for, for instead of harvesting all at one period, we can have a continuing harvest that goes on and on and on. There's lots of things you can do with the garden to provide food for your family. Uh, it's one of those basic things. I think every homestead needs a garden. There's nothing like that feeling of growing your own food. And along with this, let me just piggyback on the gardening and add to that, preserving and canning. That's another skill that you ought to really look at putting in your repertoire, being able to take the food that you grow in your garden, take the food, the meat that you, you do, and be able to can that to process big buzzard just flew right over my head. I hope that, I hope you got caught on camera behind me. But that's a very great skill to have. What are the cons of gardening? Well, if you're going to do a large garden, it could be equipment. Equipment can be expensive. Uh, you know, we have a, uh, we have an old rototiller here in the back, uh, rear tine tiller. Uh, if I were to buy that tiller today, it's probably around a thousand dollars. You know, uh, we have a, a large, a four foot a uh, tiller that we tow behind our tractor. If you buy one of those today, you, you're talking 2000 even more. So it can be very expensive, but it can also be done uh, on a budget if you do the small raised bed gardens. Another thing about gardening is that it requires a lot of work. I still have to come out here and pick and do all those things by hand that need to be done. Now you can tell by looking at this that I've not been in here with the tiller. Like I said, I've been fighting an illness all weekend and I've not been in here to do it and it looks bad. Doesn't matter if it's big, medium, or very small. A garden is a great fit for the homestead. So several years ago, this fence was built to raise pigs. Now, uh, you can't see it now. We have it closed off. We had a we had have a corridor going down into the woods where we had a little pig barn uh, that are that we raised pigs in. We uh, we raised two different batches of pigs. First year we raised two. Second year we raised three, uh, and uh, we will probably not be raising pigs again. Pigs was not in my favor. I'm mentioning this because it can be a very good source of meat uh, and a very good source of income for your homestead. So let's talk a little bit about pigs. The first thing to mention is that is that uh, pigs are, are, a lot of people don't know this, but pigs are a very clean animal. Um, unlike chickens, that don't care where they go to the bathroom and where they eat and where they sleep and they don't care if those things get intermingled. Uh, pigs will have separate areas for all of their business. They will not, they will not go to the bathroom where their food is. They will have a, a space. Usually when we had pigs, it was in that back corner over there. If they were up here on top of the pasture or if they were down there in the woods, they would have a corner in the woods there. That would be their bathroom location. They would all go to that same location. Would be far away from their food, and they would their food would, and, and their food would be away from where they were sleeping. They're very clean animals, very intelligent. So that was one thing is that that uh, they're good housekeepers. Another great thing about uh, pigs is that they produce a lot of meat. They have a depending on the breed that you get, they have a pretty good feed conversion ratio. They produce a lot of meat for the homestead. Um, we, the first batch we raised, we had enough meat to feed us and our families. 
uh, our extended families for a year. The meat is very sellable. You will have no problem selling that meat. Um, you know, when people found out that we raised pigs, a lot of people wanted, hey, can you raise one for me? So uh, it could be a very lucrative business. Well, if it was so great, why don't we raise pigs anymore? I'm just gonna be honest with you, I, I did not enjoy it. Um, I did not enjoy it. My wife did not enjoy it. It was very stressful when it came time to um, round them up and take them to be taken to be processed because you know we don't we did not have anything set up at the time to be able to to move them through our pasture. So we basically just had to catch them. So it was just not very enjoyable for us. A few cons about pigs: they can be expensive. Uh, they can be a little more expensive to start off. You may have a little harder time finding finding pigs to breed. We did not breed pigs. We bought weaned piglets, young shoats, and, and we would raise them up until they got to, uh, to market weight, and then we would take them to be processed. So uh, they can be uh, expensive, can be difficult to find. Um, Another thing is that pigs can be susceptible to parasites. And so you, uh, you kind of need to kind of keep up with, with that and be able to make sure that they are properly uh, dewormed when need be. The first batch of pigs that we bought, we bought from, they were not, let's just say they were not in the best of health. And they were, um, they were very wormy. They were very full of parasites. The second batch of pigs we got from a better a uh, better breeder, better person. Uh, we got from a better source, and those pigs are very healthy, grew to grew very fast and very rigorous. Uh, but depending on where you get your pigs from, it could be hit or miss. Another downside about raising pigs is it requires a lot of space. Um, you need a pretty good size barn to hold the pigs in. You need a lot of land. Another downside is that they can be it can be very hard on your land. Now you can't see it. But there's a few places in this pasture you can see that where the, our, our pigs had made wallows and uh, sunken in places there that uh, you know that, that still cause a problem today. So they can do some damage on, on your land. They can do some damage to your fences. Uh, you know they, uh, uh, you know Joel Southen says they've got a front end loader on their, their on their on the front of their head. They can they can root under your fence, get under a T post, pull it up out of the ground without any problem at all. So if you're gonna raise pigs, you really gonna to, want to think about using electric fence. Pigs are very trainable to electric fence. I'll tell you a story. Uh, the first batch of pigs we had, uh, we trained them in a small corral till we trained them on electric, and they became they they learned the electric well. Matter of fact, there were several times when I would come in and turn the electric off, and if they were to get distracted and accidentally bump into the wire, even though that wire was off, there was no power to that at all, they would squeal because they knew, they knew that touching that fence meant a little, a little shock. And I, I hit the fence myself and it, it doesn't hurt, but it will wake you up and you will definitely know that you, <laughs> you've touched that fence. So uh, they, they're very trainable to electric fence. Another downside about raising uh, pigs at home is that it's a little more difficult to butcher yourself. We did not do any butchering ourselves. We sent ours to a processor to be processed. Uh, now, uh, since we have done that, our processor that we use is no longer in business. So you may have a hard time finding um, somebody to process your pigs for you. So that's another thing that you gotta take into consideration is finding a good processor that's close by to you. The one we had was about 90 minute drive away. Another thing to think about with pigs is they can, depending on the breed, they can be hard to manage. The, 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 the pigs that we raised were commercial breeds, uh, you know, raised, I think the, I think the second set, I think we had were Durocs, or maybe the first set were Durocs. But they were commercial breeds, and they had kind of, a, their disposition was not the best. Um, you know, they were raised on large lots, a lot of pigs, so they were not used to being handled. Now I do, I have read that your more, your heritage breeds can be a little easier to deal with and a little more um, agreeable, I guess is the right word to use. Uh, we had the ones we had not too agreeable <laughs> sometimes. Uh, so that's something else to keep in mind. I'll tell you a funny story. So the last batch of pigs that we did, we had three pigs. Uh, and you know, we had uh, one for Michelle and I, one for a friend of mine, and one for our neighbor. 
Well, the, the one one that we had, one would we could not get loaded into the trailer. Uh, we tried everything. We could not get this pig loaded in the trailer. So we had to come up with the plan B because the processor was, go, processor was going to close and we were 90 minutes away. So we had to leave the one pig and we had to come back and deal with it ourselves. So we had to come back uh, and we contacted a, another processor uh, who we thought was a processor. We contacted them and said, hey, this is what we got. You know, what do you need? Uh, so they said, hey, look, if, you, if you'll just... Uh, uh, put the pig down, put it in your truck, bring it to us. We will take it from there, which we were. I thought that was great because I thought we were going to have to probably going to have to put it down, probably going to have to um, field dress it, you know, get it ready to go like that. I'm like, oh, this is great. You know, we can just put this pig down, put it in the back of my truck, boogie on down the road and, and be done. So that's what we did. Got to uh, the place, pulled around back. Guy come back there and looked at the back of my truck and said, what in the world do you want me to do with this? I said, well, you know, the guy that I just talked, the guy I talked to a couple of days ago said, wouldn't be a problem. Y'all can take care of this. So, so come to find out, he goes back in and about 20 minutes later, he comes back out. We're thinking, we're thinking we're just fixing to, this is fixing to be a waste. This whole, this carcass is going to be ruined if we don't get something done here. So anyway, so they come back out and they finally say, you know, the, Finally found the person that I talked to was a young man there, and he had uh, he didn't understand that there are uh, you know there were policies in place where they didn't do that. So what what ended up happening because we were told that they would, and because this meat was about to spoil if something wasn't done, they agreed to unload the pig uh, and 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 uh, do what needed to be done. So we uh, we went about uh, unloading the pig. They had electric hoist there and uh and so we began to lift the pig up well the wiring on the electric hoist burn up and so we're like i'm thinking we're never this this is this is this meat is going to be ruined or you know we, we just lost all the money that we've put into this hog we've lost it because this meat's going to spoil because we don't we're not going to be able to get rid of it but finally they get the 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 hoist rewired we get the pig out of the truck now I had put a plastic sheet in the back of my truck to kind of catch anything that may uh, come out. You can use your own imagination there. Uh, and so when, as soon as they got the pig out of my truck, I just grabbed the, that plastic sheet by the corner and drug it. They had a dumpster across the way and I was gonna dump it in the dumpster, get in the truck and go before they can change their minds. So when I did that, the contents that was on the plastic, again, you use your imagination, went all down the side of my truck. I had a white truck and so it was very visible. I didn't notice it at the time. So we're heading back home and my neighbor's with me and he says, you know, I'm, I'm getting kind of hungry. And so we decided to pull into um, a drive-in restaurant, not, not a drive-through, but a drive-in. You know, you got the spots, I like the 50s. So we pull in to get a burger and not realizing this is there. And so we, uh, we put our order in and out comes our car hop with our orders and she's got a big smile on her face and she comes around the corner and she sees my truck and it's just like her her face just went sour it was just she had this horrified look on her face and and uh and and i noticed the side of my truck was just covered with you know you know what <laughs> so um at that time, my neighbor, who was a uh, kind of a jokester, he said, uh, maybe we should ask her for some extra napkins. <laughs> but we get our burgers and we're going down the road. We're driving down through this busy, uh, good sized city that we're going through. And we stop at a red light and uh, we're munching on our burgers and enjoying our lunch. And I look over, on this side of me, there's a, there's a car there, soccer mom, family, two kids in the back, mom in the front. Well, the kids had their eyes and their noses glued to the glass of their car looking at the side of my truck. And you could see them looking, their eyes are as big as saucers. And you can tell, you, we could look at them and tell that they were trying to get their mother's attention. And their mother was watching the road, watching the red light. And you can just kind of see, you know, even though you couldn't hear, you could just kind of figure out what was going on. Oh, mama, 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 look, look, look. 
And so finally the mother says, what do you, and when she turned and saw the side of my truck, she saw that streak there of, you know what, and uh, um, red substance there, let's just say that. And she, her eyes get as big around as saucers. And she squeals rubber and runs a red light to get away from me. So at this time, we're figuring out, you know what? We better get out of town before we get arrested. So long story short, we're able to save that meat. We're able to get processed and get everything taken care of. But uh, I'm not sure if this story is going to make it in. I may delete it. But if you think it's funny, let us know. <laughs> anyway, moving on, let's talk about another idea. I did number five, and that is goats. And we're starting our second year raising goats. We bought these goats last, early last summer, so it's been over a year. We have raised one, uh, one uh, set of kids. We raised two kids last year that we have sold. And uh, uh, goats make a great fit for the homestead. Um, a lot of great things about goats. One of the great great things about goats is that goats love browse. Now, when you say, well, what in the world is browse? Well, browse is, browse is tree branches and weeds and briars and thickets and all the undergrowth that grows, grows up. Um, they love that stuff. Matter of fact, you put uh, some good, nice quality hay there and you put some briars and blackberry vines and sumac trees and all this other things there they will go past that hay to get to that browse they love browse and so that is great for uh because they keep an, they can keep an area clean um and it's also great that if you want to raise uh, more than one kind of ruminant if you want to raise sheep and goats if you want to raise a a cow uh, the goats will they will eat certain things and leave certain things and the cow will they'll come by and they'll eat what the goat doesn't like to eat. So they kind of complement each other. So goats are great. Goats are easy to take care of, uh, very minimal shelter needs, food and water. Um, and so goats are a great fit. And there's lots of uh, income streams uh, for raising goats. You can, you can sell them for meat. <clears throat> there is a big, big market for goat meat now in the United States. You can sell... Uh, the kids to be bred. You can sell the kids to other breeders that are looking to start their herd. Lots of things you can do. You can butcher them for your own home use. Put that meat in your freezer. And and, and a goat is, is much, much more easy to butcher than, say, a pig or a cow. Now, some cons to goats. Now, if you're looking for a, a custom processor, you're going to have a hard time finding uh, somebody that will custom process goat for you. So you may have be stuck with doing it yourself. Another thing about goats is that goats can be susceptible to parasites. Uh, there's a lot of parasites that really um, bother goats, um, and so you really have to be careful. Uh, and you really have to be careful when it comes to deworming goats because uh, the parasites can become or become resistant to worming medication. So you really have to be, uh, be careful with that. They do require a little bit of land um, and you know you can raise them on smaller plots of land but you're gonna have to supplement them uh, with feed goats are very easy going um, we've never had an issue with our goats being aggressive they're very easy going uh, depending on how much you pet them how much you uh, spend time with them they, they can be much like a pet goats are a great fit for the homestead guys my voice is about to go, and so I'm going to cut this off right here. I hope that these five things have given you some ideas of things that you can do on your homestead to provide food for you and your family, and even to make a little money on the side while doing it. Guys, have a great day. Thank you so much. You're awesome.